Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I am so excited to come on here and share a couple of tips with you guys. I know this may sound like business tips, but it's also kind of just general human being tips. Um, so this is probably gonna be something you're gonna wanna share um, with your friends and um, with any of your team pages and stuff like that because it's going to be pretty relevant, especially if you are in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, if you just have a, even if you have a brick and mortar business, um, if you're an entrepreneur of any kind, Quite frankly, you're probably gonna want to listen in and kind of lean in on this one. So you've probably heard the phrase from Maya Angelou, and she says that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you've done. They will never, ever, ever, emphasis is mine, um, forget how you made them feel, right? Have you heard that before? So if you take that quote to heart, right? And you think back, have you ever felt like you were used, like you were underappreciated or just flat out not appreciated? Um, has anybody left you feeling broken or stupid? Um, has anybody ever kind of sold you into something and then they just kind of ditched you and it totally made you feel used or unwanted? Here's what I wanna share with you guys. Um, a lot of times people who don't understand that it's not just the transaction, it's the transformational type relationships that people are seeking. It's not just they wanna buy something or they wanna join a business. It is they wanna be a part of something. They wanna be a part of a tribe, right? So here are a couple things that I have learned over the years that will increase your no like, and trust. Like, let's just face it. I mean, there are a lot of choices in your life, right? You have a lot of choices to decide who you want to do business with, um, who you want to go into their restaurant, who you want to buy something from. Like today, we have a lot of choices, especially in the world of social media. Like people are out there all the time right? Promoting their thing. So how do you choose who you want to do business with or not? And if you're the one in business, how do you make it to where you stand out? So like when they think of your thing or your business or whatever, how do you make it to where they come to you? They think of you. How do you separate yourself? Like network marketing is a really great example. So I'll use that. Um, let's just take uh, let's just take a kitchenware company. Okay. A lot of you guys know I used to sell for, um, I used to do home parties and sell kitchenware, which is really funny cause I don't know how to cook, but whatever. <laughs> um, I used to do kitchen parties and home shows right now at that time, there were like a hundred thousand consultants, um, nationwide. Okay. We all sold from the same catalog. So how is it that somebody who's got 100,000 people selling from the same catalog, how do they separate themselves and bring people in who want to purchase it from them, okay? And how do you keep, keep people coming back? I'll tell you right now, it's straight up that phrase from Maya Angelou, it is how you make them feel. It's not what you say, it's not what you do, it is how you make them feel, but they all kind of go together. Okay, so I wanna give you guys four tips that have really helped me in my business. It's helped retention, it's helped me be a top sponsor and the top salesperson in every single thing I've ever done. And we're talking the span of over 20 years. I've always hit top sales. I've always hit top recruiting in terms of numbers and sponsoring, um, always. I've earned the trips and the trophies and all of that. And it is really down to these four things I'm gonna share. And I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit of a warning. Coming from personal experience, I'm not gonna drop any names, I'm not gonna throw any shade. Um, but coming from personal experience, I have personally been on the receiving end of the last thing I'm gonna share with you guys, the, the one thing that you could be doing right now, you probably don't even realize it because you're probably a really nice person and you probably have really great intentions. But the thing is, is that you might be doing this without even realizing it and it could be killing your retention. It could be killing your business and it will self implode. It will, it'll crush it. It's terrible. It's the most terrible thing that I see going on. And it actually happened to me by a top mega superstar mega earner in network marketing. I mean, yikes. I'm not gonna name names. 
because I still think he's a great person. However, it like really taught me, you know, you can learn lessons. Am I right? Like you can learn lessons. Hey, Jenny, you can learn lessons from people who are doing it the right way and you can emulate that right? Like, oh my gosh, that person's a rock star. Jenny, she is a total rock star. You know, the stuff that she's posting, I want to try and think how she's thinking so I can try to duplicate what she's doing, right? I'm not going to copy it, but I want to learn the mindset so I can emulate that, right? Likewise, if you see someone who's doing it totally wrong, probably not even realizing it. I mean, here's the reality. Like this person, I'm gonna talk about this in a few minutes, but this person who left me feeling broken, used, um, unappreciated, which is interesting considering the business he's a part of, um, I, I literally felt like a nobody. And it taught me so much. I, it was worth doing a transaction with him as a customer simply to learn that lesson on the receiving end. Because sometimes I feel like the hardest uh, impacting lessons that you will learn are when you are the one that has had the the pain when you're the one that has the scar right so here we are like two and a half years later and I'm teaching you guys what I learned from that so okay let me jump right into it um, I'm gonna go ahead and share this to my groups too if you um, feel like you've got a team or people who want more retention people who want to increase their know like and trust factor people who want to grow their business authentically with heart and hustle but keeping the authentic side keeping the integrity doing it the right way making people feel loved in the process of building their business like a rock star share this out it'll be great for anybody who's in network marketing um or in direct sales where's my page okay um all right so let's get into this right okay and i'm kind of like i'm kind of excited to share the the painful part but i'm gonna save i'm gonna save the best for last it's actually the worst but i'm gonna save the the best for last for that okay so number one so in the beginning i was sharing with you guys maya angelou has this quote you've all heard it i know you've all heard it um of people will forget the way you made them people will forget what you said people will forget what you did they will never forget the way you made them feel like right here okay that can be a good thing because if you leave them feeling uplifted, inspired, empowered, smart, strong, like a, they can go get it, they can go do it, they deserve it. If you make them feel worthy, that's my heart, that's my mission, right? If I make you feel like that, you probably won't remember in two years what I said that made you feel like that. You're not gonna remember the, like the exact words of a video that I've done that left you feeling, dang, every time I watch one of her videos, I feel like I can just climb that mountain. <laughs> I feel like I can crush it in my business, right? All right, likewise, if you have run across someone who makes you feel less than, unworthy, used, mm, tossed aside, like just it was a transaction, you meant nothing to them. Um, you'll remember that too. And here's the crazy part, you guys, when someone treats you like that, um, they might go live on Facebook and talk about it. <laughs> now, I, listen, I'm not gonna name names, I'm not gonna throw any shade, but I am gonna talk about it because I remember so crystal clear. I don't remember all the details of how he did it or um, what he said or whatever. All I know is that I left that transaction, like I was becoming a customer of his, I left that transaction feeling so used. And I'll, exp I'll explain more in a minute. All right, so tip number one, the first thing that you need to do to increase your know, like, and trust factor. And here's the deal, you guys. People do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So back when I was selling kitchenware, right, and 100,000 other consultants were selling from the same exact catalog as me, we all had the same catalog, we all had the same website, how did I get to the number four salesperson in the entire company out of 100,000 sales consultants? I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that like, how, how did I do that? I did it because people know me, like me, and trusted me. So I'm gonna give you guys four tips of how to make that happen, okay? Number one, and I believe personally, this is probably the most important one, okay? Is being a person of your word. Integrity is everything. Your, your ability to 
maintain your integrity in times of stress, in times of scarcity, in times of lack, in times of fear. People do dumb things when they're afraid. Have you noticed? People do really dumb things when they're feeling scared, like they have to hold on as tight as they can to their team, to their money, to their whatever. They, they act dumb, <laughs> right? So holding on to your integrity and being a person of your word is everything in my opinion. Um, you can have all the sales skills and all the guru type stuff. You can have written a book. You can have all these, you know, classes and whatever. But listen, if you're not doing it with integrity, it's going to come back and bite you. It always will. Always. Integrity, you know, being a person of your word, I'll give you some real examples of that is when you say you're gonna call someone, call them. When you say you're gonna do a team call, do it. When you say that you're going to, you know, when you're sponsoring somebody and you're like, oh yeah, I mean, I'm like messaging them back within 30 seconds and like I'm on it because I'm trying to recruit them. Being a person of your word means after they say yes, after they're already in, continuing to do that. Keep living up to the expectations that you have told them to set for you. Being a person of your word. You know, if you say you're going to follow up with somebody, to, you know, Tuesday at 3 p.m., do it. Live by your calendar. Write things down. People don't like the answer of, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot. Because the reality is, is what you're saying to them is, I forgot about you because you are on my low priority list. Y'all feel me? Like, this is real. This is real here. Um, if you are new to my videos, put new below. I'd love to just give you a shout out. If you hit share, let me know that too. I'd love to know if you shared it into your team pages and stuff so I can give you a shout out and say thank you as well. All right, tip number two, how to get no like and trust factor up, 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 okay? Number two is find out what's in it for them. Now, this isn't just for people in network marketing, although that is my wheelhouse, that is my space, okay? Network marketing, social media, that kind of stuff, that's my jam. But people are my jam. I love people. More than any of the whole like, what goes spinning around in circles as far as like this business goes. The heart behind it all, everything that I do, hey Jennifer, welcome, um, is that I love people. I love helping people. And so along with that, you'll be really successful in your business when you put people's goals and what they're wanting in the forefront of your mind. Now, I'm not saying to like sacrifice yourself so that they can have whatever. I, you have to listen. Like when you're on an airplane, the, the flight attendants are like, you know, put your own mask on before you do some do it to other people right because like you're no good to anybody if you're not breathing and if you're not practicing self-care so i'm not saying that what i am saying though is that when you go into business when you're onboarding like a new customer or a new temp team member or let's say you're a realtor <laughs> you know this is actually a great example of being a realtor okay so sometimes do you guys watch those like home buyer shows where like they're on HGTV and they're working with a realtor and they're trying to buy a house? This is going to sound super weird, but I, what I notice so many times, hey Cindy, is that these people, like these couples will go with the house hunter people and they're like, here's what we're looking for. We want a backyard. We need at least three bedrooms. We really want a fenced in yard because we've got kids. Da -da -da -da. They list all these things, right? And here's our budget. Dude, the realtor shows them something with like six bedrooms, no fenced yard. It's not even a yard at all. It's concrete. It's In fact, it's got a pool and there's no fence even around the pool. Like, <laughs> and it's twice as much as their budget. Have y'all ever seen shows like that? The first thing that goes into my mind, and I know it's probably all scripted, don't kill my reality. I know those shows are fake. However, when I watch those shows, I'm like thinking as an entrepreneur, you would kill your business if you acted like that realtor because that person did two, for the first two things, they did it wrong, like strike out. Number one, they were not a person of their word. They did not come through on the promise that they made to their potential buyer that I will help you find the house that you want. And two, they did not have their goals in mind of their buyer. Here's the thing, in network marketing and indirect sales, we are always going for an incentive. 
That's the beauty of this business. There's always like a trip or a car or a bonus or something that some, all of us are working towards, all of us, every single person, all of you. If you're in direct sales or network marketing, there's always the next thing. Companies do that on purpose. There's always a carrot to keep you going, right? The risk in that, if you don't calm it, is that in the heat of the moment, when you are onboarding a new customer or a new team member, you forget they might not be after the same goals you are. So in our rush to get them going and get them started and come in with the biggest package and all this kind of stuff, what if, they're, what if that's not their goal? Y'all, like I have some people on my team who they just love being a part of the community. They are not trying to hit the top of the pay plan. They're not but they sure do order every month and they sure do love being a customer that's a promoter. They love being a part of this tribe. They love feeling appreciated. They love being included, right? I know when I bring someone on what their goals are, I'm gonna ask them straight up, what do you want from this? Whether it's a customer, I wanna know, what is your goal? Are you looking to lose weight? Are you looking for whatever, better skin? Are you looking for better sleep? Are you looking for pain management? Well, I wanna know what they're looking for. If they're a promoter, I wanna know what income level are you looking for right now? Knowing it could change, okay? I know it could change. It could go like a skyrocket, right? But I wanna know what their goal is, and I also wanna know why they have that goal. So that's another quick tip, like a little side note, is that when you're talking about, thanks for sharing, Vicki, um, when you're talking to them about what's your goal, I'm not talking about money. I want you to ask them, what is that money gonna do for you? What is your plan for it? Like, it could be that they wanna take their family on a cruise. <laughs> it could be something like that, right? It could be, I talked to somebody the other day who they have a child, um, He's got a he's got a son. He's got a dis his son has a disability, and his treatments are very, very, very expensive, like super expensive. And he needs to fill in the gaps. He is not looking to replace his full time career yet. Uh, <laughs> but he, right now, he's just needing to fill the gaps. He's needing to get from point A to point B. Okay, financially, that's what he's looking for. But I know it's not about the money. I know that there is a mission to the money right? So figure out what their goals are. Number three, and this is probably a big one, is the appreciation side of it. Um, now, this is going to kind of lead into the number one thing that you probably are doing that you might not realize you're doing, okay? Good people do this. Good people make this terrible mistake, and I'm going to share it with you. The thank you and the appreciation. Okay, so it's a no brainer that when somebody places their very first order with you, or if you're a realtor and they buy their house through you, okay? Um, or if you sell cars, they bought their car from you. It's a no brainer. You're going to tell them thank you. I mean, duh, right? That's, that's not what I'm talking about. How many of you continue to show appreciation every single time they order? Eek, right? Like, here's the thing, a lot of people don't do that. Um, so I wanna encourage you guys for tip number three is show continued appreciation when they order. Don't just thank them the first time. Try to thank them every time. Now look, I get it. If you have a ton of people and you've got a ton of orders, that might get a little cray cray, okay? Um, this is something I'm personally working on myself because I do, I have a ton of people um, to thank, but how blessed am I that I have too many people to thank? <laughs> I mean, hello, like, like, let's let's choose our hard, <laughs> right? Hard is having to so many people to thank. I'd never have enough time. Harder is not having anybody to thank because nobody wants to do business with me. I think I'll choose my hard, right? So this is something I'm personally working on. Um, 
It could be something like little thank you cards. Um, you know, in our business, we've got like products that fit into an envelope. So if you have something like that, it could be like sending them a voice message, just saying, hey, I just wanted to send a quick message and just thank you for your order. Again, I know you've been ordering for every single month for the past three and a half years, but it never gets old. And I want you to always know, I always appreciate it every single time. It doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you so much. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. That's it. It takes 10 seconds to send that to send that message, but y'all, again, they won't remember what the message said, but they will remember for years and years and years how you made them feel when they when they heard that message or when they got that card. They will. They'll remember it forever. <laughs> Good or bad. Um, all right. Number four, and this is going to this is gonna lead into like the most terrible thing ever, ever, ever that um, so far. I would venture to say the lack of this person doing this number four, this number tip, number four tip is probably the, well, I'm not going to say the ickiest thing, but up there with one of the most icky things I've had happen to me personally on the consumer side of network marketing or direct sales. Okay. But it taught me a really valuable lesson. I learned how to be a superstar in terms of customer care, in terms of taking care of my team. I learned some valuable lessons by being treated like this, who this person clearly <laughs> did not hear this tip that I'm gonna give to you right now, okay? You ready? Um, are you guys married? Comment below if you're married. So I'm gonna relate it to this. We've been married for 25 years. I've been married for 25 years to my husband. Uh, and I still like him. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that out there. I've been married for 25 years, same person. I still like him, okay? The reason why I'm saying that is because, okay, this is gonna get like personal. We still court each other. Y'all know what that means? Am I like getting old and like super elderly right now? We still court each other. We still go on dates. We still talk to each other and tell each other we love each other. We still nurture our relationship. Okay, so you're probably like, Laura, what in the world? <laughs> Where is this going? Okay, when you have someone who has said yes to you, don't stop dating them. Don't stop nurturing them. Don't stop courting them. Don't stop doing the thing that got them to say yes in the first place. Do y'all know how many people I see who sign someone up and then they dump them? Just like, uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Like, like literally, it's, y'all, this is a relationship. When you have someone who does business with you, you, oh, thank you so much, Allison. You don't look old enough to be married for 25 years. Oh, thank you. You're my favorite. <laughs> I wish I could hit, like, top fan button right there. Um, Here's the thing. If you have someone who said yes to you, you did something or a series of some things that got them to that point to like, yes, this is the person that I'm choosing to do business with. They're, they have a lot of choices out there, you know? Um, and if you stop doing those things, they're going to feel like it was like a bait and switch. Th that is how they're going to feel. You might not have said anything or done anything to make them feel like that, but that is how they're going to feel. They're gonna feel like they got recruited, but not sponsored. They're gonna feel like they got enrolled and then ditched. You don't wanna make them feel like that. And I will tell you my, my personal example of, of what happened to me, and this is such a valuable, I am so grateful to have learned this lesson because I don't think I would have learned it otherwise. I really don't. Um, so I was a customer. I wanted to be a customer or a consumer of this person's product or service, right? Um, this person, I've known him for years and years and years. He's actually kind of super famous in the network marketing industry. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I've known him for years. Um, you know, like online, like, like online, um, through Facebook, through social media. So I went to him and I said, Hey, listen, you're like the, f the person. When I think of this company, when I think of this service, I think of you, Hey Lisa, um, you're amazing. Um, when I think of this, I think of you, he's done a great job, like branding himself and not being weird. All right. So here y'all, this is, 
this is okay. I'm not going to say this person's name because I still respect him. Um, so I wanted to be a customer or a consumer of this person's business. Okay. So I messaged him and he was like, within 30 seconds, he messaged me right back. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, this is guy, this guy is like mega famous in the network marketing space. I mean, like he has a bazillion people with him. Okay. He messaged me right back and he's like liking my pictures and he's commenting on my lives and he's courting me because I haven't said yes yet. Okay. This is good. This is going to get good. Um, so he's like, like every time I posted anything, he would like it. Like he had me, he had me as like up at the top, you can click and you can hit the follow or subscribe button and you can set someone to like see first or close friends. So you get like notifications. Um, you can do that. Like at the top of this page, I know he had that on because every time I posted anything, he was like the first one to click like, okay which made me feel really special. Again, it's going back to, it's not what he said, it's not what he did, it's how he was making me feel as a potential customer. I felt like, wow, he would treat me really, really well if I was a customer of his, okay? That's how he made me feel. So, a few days later after that, I mean, look, look, I'm an easy sale. If I want your thing, I, I'm an easy, I don't have to be convinced. <laughs> Like, I know what I want, I'm headstrong, I already know. Uh, I'm a figure it out person, right? So it only took a couple of days of just going back and forth, just working out details of which plan I wanted and, and so forth. He invited me onto a Zoom call with him, like a face-to-face -face Zoom. This guy is like famous. So I said yes, I mean, he's not like famous famous, but like he's, he's if I said his name, y'all would know. Okay, so I get on the Zoom with him, okay? God bless him, so good, such a good presentation. I learned a ton about how to do my own business presentations by watching him do his business presentation. Of course, he tried to recruit me into the business by just kind of like side whispering it a little bit and I'm like, dude, I respect that, I love it, I love you, no thanks. However, I learned like language, I can always pull and learn from people. I love hearing people's presentations. I am not that person who's like, ooh, don't spam me. I can learn from anything. I learn from realtors who sell homes. I learn from every time we purchase a car. I can learn from them. I can learn from anybody in any business of how they're growing their business, if it works, and if it feels right in my gut, if it feels like of integrity, I can learn and draw something out to implement it into my own and teach my team how to do it. That is a talent that I have, okay? So for me, I was like, give it all to me. Like recruit me, right? Like pitch me. <laughs> okay. So we did the deal. I became a customer of his. I signed up. I said no to the, the business side of it, of course. Um, but I did become a customer. Okay. Got the email, got, you know, thank yous and all this kind of stuff. And you know what he did next? Nothing, nothing like, like nothing. No likes, to this day, this is about two years ago, to this day, no likes on the videos, no likes on the posts, no comments on anything, not a single message. I canceled my subscription um, six months. I went, I went on, I, I continued the subscription for six months, kind of thinking, well, maybe he's busy, maybe he's traveling, you know, whatever. Um, it's not that I have to be babied or pampered. It's not that. What I realized was that he was after the sale. He was after the transaction. He was after the transaction. He was not after the transformation. He was not after the relationship. He was not appreciative of me as a person saying yes to him as a business owner. That's how he made me feel. He made me feel like I was used, unappreciated. I was just a number. Um, I was probably like another tick mark on his way to earn the next incentive trip or whatever. I was just a number, you know, a number plus one. Um, and that was it because once the transaction was done, I never still, still to this day, I have not heard a peep from him. Nothing, nothing y'all. So it goes back to, he didn't. The, the quote from Maya Angelou, they won't remember what you said. They won't remember what you did. They will remember how you made them feel, okay? He did not say anything 
or do anything to hurt my feelings or make me feel unappreciated or used or anything like that. He didn't make me feel like that by doing anything or saying anything. He made me feel like that by his just uh, hit it and forget it kind of thing. You know, I mean, it was just, it was a transaction. It was terrible. But I am grateful because I learned a ton from that. It really solidified for me. In this big world of business, people have a lot of choices. People can do business with a lot of different people selling the same thing. I mean, honestly, like look at YouTube, look at Amazon, look how many books there are. Look how many products, you know, how many representatives your product has. How many people are representing your same product? What sets you apart? It has to be how you make people feel. Because your retention, you might get the one sale like he did, you know, like he got the plus one, he dinged, right? Like he got the person, however, he lost me. And when I want to do business with that company again, when I want to restart and re, you know, get that product again or get that service going again, I will not do it with him ever. If somebody ever asks me, who should I go to for this service or product? I will say anyone but him and I will name him because the way he made me feel was very just used, right? Um, so I want to leave you guys with this. You can have the whole like hustle, be a top sponsor, be a top salesperson. You can hustle your face off, but I am pleading with you guys, don't lose the heart side, the integrity side of your business because if you're not leaving people feeling, number one, that they got the thing that they were asking for, but if you are not leaving them feeling empowered, uplifted, inspired, educated, feeling like you actually do care about them. You weren't just toying with their emotions. You weren't just clicking like on their pictures just to get something. Listen, if the only time you're contacting your leads is to ask them if they want to purchase something or, or follow up on a promo that's going on, they'll know it. They feel it. Don't do that. Don't only message someone when you need something from them that usually has to do with money. I mean, come on, you have to take the time to nurture the people that you want, who you want them to know, like, and trust you. That is how they're going to say yes to do business with you. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys, the four tips and the one big time no, no. And I did so good. I didn't even like, I didn't even slip and tell you guys his name. I promised I wouldn't. So I'm just, I'm not that person. Um, but Here's my other, and then, I'll, and then I'll go. My other tip for you is when someone does leave you feeling that way, try to turn it around and learn something to empower yourself. If someone disarms you, okay, where it makes you feel used, undervalued, broken, um, you have the ability to take that and turn it around and re-armor yourself, re-empower yourself. Do this, go on and reteach. Hey, this is what I went through that made me feel like this. This is the lesson that I learned from that so I can give someone else and I can empower someone else to rise above. That's how you can get your power back, okay? Because no one and nothing is able to disarm you and disempower you and make you feel broken and break you and make you feel any sort of way unless you allow it. Please listen to that again. They do not have permission. They do not have that kind of power unless you allow it. So take your power back. When I felt like this, I'm like, I'm gonna learn this lesson. One, I'm gonna make some course adjustments in how I treat my own people. <laughs> and I'm gonna improve that, on how I treat my own people. And then I'm gonna turn around and share the love. I'm gonna turn around and spread this out to as many people as will hear me because if we can take this one thing and spread it out like wildfire, can you imagine how much better the world would be if people felt loved and appreciated and empowered and uplifted and inspired by people who go on Facebook and social media? Y'all, there's two billion people we can reach. Let's not let them sit there and think that someone has the power to take away their armor. They don't. 
We have to be the ones though who rise up, who lock arms with them and say, you better take it back. Take your power back. Don't let anybody make you feel like that. Even if something super crappy happens to you, turn it around and use it for good. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you shared it, let me know. If you're watching the replay, comment replay below. I love you and appreciate you. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.